What's up guys? Josh with Driver Motorsports back again for some tech knowledge. We are going over an engine build and behind me I have some special equipment that I want to talk about and the process that we're going to be going through uh, not in so much great detail but to kind of give you the idea of what we do with every single engine build. The process I'm talking about is engine blueprinting. So it's not something that is normally done at the you know bare bones or street application uh, type engine shops. This is more for your high level racing type applications and it's when your clearances and things like that, tolerances inside of your engine build mean much, much more. So we're gonna get into that, but blueprinting, what is it? What do you think it is? Does it mean the engine's faster? Does it mean the engine's slower? Is it gonna last longer? Comment below what you think blueprinting is gonna do for you. So I'm gonna talk about our process and the things that we go uh, to great lengths to make sure that we document every step of the way so that you, the end user, is going to know specifically what's going on with all those expensive bits that you purchased from us and are slapped inside your engine rotating at, you know, eight, nine, ten thousand RPM. So to find out a greater amount of information in more detail, uh, check out our friends over at HP Academy where they have lessons on full engine builds and blueprints and there's packages that you can sign up for and I'll have links down below. Utilize the coupon code DRIVER50 for $50 off of that first enrollment and, uh, you know, save yourself some money, learn you some cool stuff, check it out, HP Academy for all the information. All right, guys, so I want to quickly go over some of the tools and equipment that you're going to need to essentially blueprint an engine. Now, you can purchase some of these tools on the, uh, the lower end of the price spectrum. Um, but again, if you're going to such great lengths to document everything happening inside of an engine, you want to make sure you're using precision tools. I can't stress that enough, precision tools. So uh, you're going to look at the price tag of some of these things and you're going to be like, oh man, no way am I going to do that. So again, this is the length that we go at Driver Motorsports with every single engine that we assemble. And uh, you know, our process doesn't deviate. But it wasn't too long back, you know, probably within the last eight to ten years, so I guess that's a long time. Um, I was assembling engines in my little two-car garage and I didn't have all the fancy equipment so I was using a little thing called plastic gauge. Uh, I have some of that here, I'll show some of that here in a little bit um, and how it works and I've not had any engine failures or issues you know as a result of using that method. So um, with that coupled with a base tool uh, known as a caliper you know, again, these, you know, you can spend a lot of money on or a little bit of money on and, and you kind of get what you pay for uh, as such. So, again, using a caliper inside and outside uh, measurements for diameters and such like that. Very, very handy tool. Um, not to mention, you know, some of the more precise things that we're going to be using uh, are going to be micrometers. So there's different varying types of these inside diameter, outside diameter. Uh, primarily, I'm using these to measure, uh, you know, crank widths and, you know, different thing on pistons, you know, the, the skirt widths so I can get the piston to wall clearance uh, dialed in properly. So, again, these things don't scrimp out, get the nice stuff because, you know, you're going to pay for it if you, uh, you know, end up using a cheaper tool that fails you measurement wise and then it costs you an engine, in which case that ex added expense of rebuilding an engine you probably would have spent on the tools the first time around. So, you know, be smart, buy the, buy the tools that you need and brands that you trust. All right, then lastly, one of the other things that I use is a very nice uh, dial bore gauge. So this one has lots of different options. I have three different arm lengths to get the different inch, you know, areas that I need to get to, as well as I can set this thing up with another uh, gadget I have to be able to do um, you know, clearances for crank. So if I'm doing thrust, I'm um, checking, you know, cams and lift and all kind of other craziness. So again, very nice tools give you very nice readouts, in which case you don't have to second guess yourself when, uh, you know, your engine's rotating at, at full tilt. So those are some of the tools. As I said, uh, put your money where your mouth is when it comes to stuff like that. If you're going to take the time to go through an engine top to bottom, head to toe, inside and out, you know, don't waste time and effort, you know, having to second guess, is it going to hold together when the measurements you took may or may not be up to spec. All right. So as I said, there's a tool called plastic gauge that um, basically is nothing more than a, like a plastic line 
that has some measurements on here. They come in different ranges. You need to make sure that you're getting the right stuff for the clearance levels that you're going to be looking for. So as always, with any of the maintenance that we're doing, we're going to refer to our technical manuals. So back here, I have pretty much what I like to call my GTR Bible. It's everything RB26 um, when dealing with the Skyline chassis, so the R chassis particularly. So it is going to translate to a lot of other engines. So again, just make sure you're looking at the book that contains the information to the specific application that you're working on. So uh, essentially how this thing is going to work is when you start to assemble your engine and you have a bearing clearance that you're trying to measure to make sure that it's not too tight or too loose, um, you basically are going to snip some of this, place it along say the crank for example for the mains and then you're going to install that crank. Now very very important that you don't rotate the crank over because you got this little piece of you know wax string in there and that's essentially going to screw up any chance of reading what clearance you are. Not to mention you've got brand new bearings in there that essentially are not lubricated in which case you could damage the brand new stuff that you just put in there. So by no means should you be spinning this thing over when you tighten everything down. When it comes to tightening down, make sure you're using a torque wrench. This one is just an example. We have a really nice snap-on digital that we use um, that's got the specified torque ranges and angles that we need for a specific application. So just for reference, make sure you got a torque wrench so that when you tighten those you know, crank caps down, they're at the proper spec that the engine is going to be operated at. Very, very important. So if it's too loose or too tight, that is going to deform or change the shape in which you know this is going to measure. So if you tighten it down incorrectly, out of sequence, you don't follow the technical manual, your reading is going to be off, you're going to be kicking yourself later because you are going to have a failure. So with that, you know, be mindful. Pay attention to what you're doing keep everything super clean. Um, you know, again, I've been building engines for a long time in a small little garage and, you know, cleanliness is where it's at. You know, you don't have to go hunting down hardware. You don't have to worry about did everything make it where it goes because everything has its proper place. So keep your workspace clean, stay organized, and, uh, you know, you shouldn't have any problems. I say shouldn't because, you know, those wee hours of the night when you've been burning the candle at both ends and sometimes in the middle, yeah, you're going to forget, you're going to be tired, you're going to leave stuff thinking you're going to remember, but I'm telling you that's not the case. So write everything down, document all the steps you are, and clean up when you're done so you're starting fresh every time you pick back up. All right, guys, so another very important thing is, you know, your parts that you're using. So we at Driver Motorsports pride ourselves on using quality parts. So we typically, for our standard builds, we're using ACL race series bearings for both the, the crank and the rods and these are available in many different sizes so again check your manufacturer specification to get the sizes that you need so in this instance these are a standard set of main bearings and these are a standard set of uh, connecting rod mains or connecting rod bearings if you will um, all of which are going to be the heart of our rotating assembly so very important that just because they say they're the standard you know we don't just slap these in and call it good you do need to verify that everything is the right tolerance. So whether you're using the plastic gauge method or you're using the micrometers and the dial bore gauge to figure out your clearances, um, you know, starting with quality parts definitely makes your life easy. So, you know, kind of a rundown on how that's going to work. Um, if I was using the dial bore gauge um, to measure, you know, different cylinders and things like that to make sure that my piston, you know, fit is going to be proper. Uh, I'm going to need to be writing all that stuff down. When it comes to all the rotating assembly, the bearing clearances and all that stuff, again, I'm going to need to be writing that stuff down. Uh, there's tons of information out there on how to do this, why to do this, what information do you need to know. Um, so a quick Google search will bring you up multiple spreadsheets that people have created over the years. Some of them are links to like actual dealership shops that this is what they use. Um, so a quick example, one that I just, I mean, just to show you how easy it is, we at Driver Motorsports have our own, but I just Googled this one, and it's a two-page printout that just shows all the different, you know, things that you would need to document when blueprinting an engine. So um, I've gone through and I started writing a lot of the stuff down that I know to be true, and I'm going back to verify all the things that I don't know to be true, and at the end of this job, this entire sheet should be filled out no spaces with the exception of like this thing is all the way up to a V8 or eight cylinder engine. And with the RB26, I'm only using six. So, you know, don't think that you're gonna remember all this stuff 
document it, and especially in the future when it comes time to uh, you know think about adding more power or doing different you know progress change to your build, you'll have the the knowledge knowing that hey this engine is prepped and equipped to take that abuse when you throw more boost at it or you know whatever the case is. So you know quick Google shirt search, print you some stuff out, document all your information, and uh, you know, try not to make any mistakes with that. All right, last thing I wanna talk about is how am I figuring out clearances um, based on, you know, the engine that I'm using um, and what happens if I'm installing aftermarket components such as cams or a stroker kit or, you know, X. You're, you're, you're putting a variable into what was before an OEM engine. How do you figure out what those clearances are? Because, I mean, you'd be writing assuming that the technical manual is written for the bare bones stock OEM RB26 application. So it's quite you know easy to put that together that if you change your cams, if you change you know tolerances, if you change something due to a, a aftermarket component, those measurements out the window. So again, very important that you're following the technical manuals, but you may be asking yourself, how do I follow the technical manuals if the technical manual is now incorrect due to aftermarket products? Well, the best news is the aftermarket products are gonna come with specification sheets. So this is for a set of CP pistons. Um, basically, all we had to do was verify that once our engine was inspected and the bores were gone through and we didn't have any issues, if it needed to be you know, bored over to another size, that we order the proper size pistons for the engine that we're working on. So obviously if you know my engine is at a stock bore of 86 millimeters and I buy a set of you know 87 millimeter pistons, there's a huge jump between 86 and 87 when you're talking about the machining world. And it would be pretty silly to just bore your engine up to 87 mil because that's the pistons that you got. So again, pay attention. If your engine is at the factory you know, spec and you need to go oversize, you know, talk it out with your machinist to make sure that you're not taking too much material and forcing you know, your hand to later down the road where your engine is just out of serviceability. What I mean by that is again, stock bore in the RB26 of 86 mil. If you, you know, do have some issues, some damage that occurs and you need to step it up to the next, you wanna to go to the 86.5 mil and then 87, 87.5, all the way up to 88 and then you start looking at hey you're going to need to sleeve and do some very expensive things or just try to source a whole new block um, you know again just be smart you know these engines have lasted 30 years in the stock form uh, up till this point before you started throwing power and stuff at them so no reason to think that with responsible build and responsible use that you know going up that half size um, is going to last another 30 years so it's up to you you know do your due diligence talk to your machine shop make sure that you're not taking this thing outside of its limits or robbing yourself of serviceability later down the road spec sheets use them all right guys last thing i want to talk about is just kind of an overview of what we discussed you know the proper tools using the technical manuals using the manufacturer specification sheets just ensuring that you are well prepared for what you're about to dive yourself into. If you've never built an engine before, uh, don't be afraid. It is not as difficult as you would think. And as long as, again, you are you know, doing your homework and not biting off more than you can chew, uh, you should end up just fine. So when selecting your tools, obviously if budget is in mind, you know, pay attention to the type of things that you're buying. Look at reviews. Make sure that, you know, you're not just going with the wish.com version. And um, it's literally a toy when it shows up. You know, you don't want to trust that uh, with something that costs so much money that is rapidly becoming irreplaceable. So, you know, again, do your diligence. Pay attention to what you're buying. Check out the reviews. I mean, again, in my eyes, it's gambling. If you like throwing away money, whether it be in the form of an engine-shaped item or a tool-shaped item, you know, buying the proper tools will save you a lot of headache and heartache down the road. Measurements. So when taking these measurements, ensure that, you know, you're, you pick a method and you stick to it. Don't be afraid to go back and double check your work. I know that when we were all in school, that was the worst. Like you work out a formula, you come out with the answer and you're like, oh, that's the answer. 
but then you're required to go back and like check your work and you had to do a whole nother thing just to make sure that your answer was right. Um, I never thought I would do that again after I got out of school, but hey, you know, here it is, still doing it. And um, it's just as frustrating, let me, let me tell you that. So doing it right the first time makes it going back and checking your work that much better. So, you know, that's gonna stay on track by writing everything down. So as you write the stuff down and you're doing all your things, you're basically creating a spreadsheet that is going to have a formula that's going to, you know, this is what, what part you were measuring, this is what bearing material you were looking at, where it's going, the, the clearance level is the gap you should have in between. That's going to be justified via your, you know, micrometers and dial bore gauge or using your plastic gauge, and which case now you know that it's built to specification. So, you know, again, it's not supposed to be frustrating. It's not supposed to be uh, the most difficult thing in the world, but I get it. Not everybody is, uh, you know, good at working with tools or working with their hands or dealing with position elements. And um, let's be real, working on engines can be a very dirty job, but it's also very rewarding. So I typically enjoy building these engines and it's nice to come into the engine room, close off the doors and just put on some tunes and just be in a sanctuary. So. You know, it's my escape. It's also my most favorite thing to hand assemble these engines, get them thrown back in the car, take them over to the dyno and hear them, hear them sing. So, you know, again, if you're in doubt, do your research, figure out what it is you, you think you can and cannot do and start small. Nobody said you need to go pull the engine out of your daily driver and try to do a rebuild in your living room. But, you know, again, you and a couple buddies want to get together, learn some stuff about an engine, you know, hit up one of your local salvage yards, pick up an engine for super cheap, and uh, take it apart and see what happens. So, this is Josh with Driver Motorsports. These are my tech tips or info on what we do here as far as blueprinting engines that we build throughout our process for you. All right, guys, so that's pretty much the end of this video. Uh, if you like this information and want to see more stuff like it, drop a comment below. Let me know what it is you want me to cover in a future video, as well as if you have any questions over the things that we covered today. Uh, again, throw it out there and I'll do the best I can to get those answered right away. And lastly, I just want to throw one more shout out to the HP Academy guys. I recently got the opportunity to meet a bunch of them and they checked out one of the cars that we built and they really liked it. I really enjoyed talking with them and uh, you know, seeing that they're true, true to life, the legends that I thought they were via their online presence so you know as said in the intro links are below if there's a course that you want to take use coupon code driver 50 for 50 bucks off that course and uh yeah get your learn on